in the health and fitness industry for over 16 years, which is crazy because I look like I'm 10, right? People ask me that all the time. They're like, how, how have you been doing this for so long? Just add about 10 years on to what you think, like what you think my age is, and that's my real age. Um, I will divulge my real age in a little bit. But uh, so yeah, I've been in the fitness industry for 16 years. So a really big part of my job is to motivate people, to create energy for people, to inspire people, and like ultimately be the biggest, baddest cheerleader for my clients. And um, I'm good at it. I'm really good at motivating people, okay? I've, I, I, like, I, I get fired up for others. However, I have to let you in on a small secret. For myself, it's not the same. And so I know a little thing or two about motivation. And so today we're gonna speak honestly about motivation. Uh, I'm going to let you in on a couple secrets that I've learned over the last 16 years. And I'm going to teach you today why you should be choosing motion, not motivation. All right? Also, I do know a fair, a, a fair bit about struggle. So everyone's been brave enough to come up here and tell their stories. And so I do. I want to share a little bit um, about my story and why uh, I why I've kind of spiraled into this awesome self-growth journey over the last three to four years in my life. So, okay, so let's start here. Uh, first of all, I want you, before I go into the rest of my spiel and blah, 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 I want everybody to just kind of sit back and I want you to think of one area of your life right now where you're stuck. It could be anything. It could be a relationship. It could be in your career. It could be financially. But just think of an area in your life of where you're stuck, and I want you to just, like, lock it in, all right, because we're going to come back to that. So I want to talk first a bit about uh, struggling. So if you look at this picture, like, it's, it's a cool picture, right? This group is amazing. Um, they were so phenomenal to work with. Everyone's having fun. Everyone has a smiling face. But if you're looking on the outside in, you would think, oh yeah, Britt's like so pr super happy. She's like motivated. Like if you look at my social media, you would say like I'm always about having fun and I'm super upbeat and I have so much energy. So here's the thing. There's two things about this picture that nobody knows. I will tell you now. So number one, about two weeks after this picture was taken, that gym that I was working at went bankrupt. So they basically called us in one morning and said, sorry guys, we can't make a go of this. Like you got two weeks and we're closing shop not our problem, you don't have a job. So I didn't have a job a couple weeks after this picture was taken. Uh, the second thing you don't know about this picture is I look happy, right? However, when this picture was taken, I can legitimately say I was at the lowest point in my life. Um, I was working for the city for 11 years. I had just quit my job because I had just gotten married, like just. So unfortunately, I was married for only three months. And it ended epically. Uh, it was unfortunate circumstances that were sad. Uh, that it just, like literally entirely stripped my self worth. And so you would never know what to look at this picture, but like I was literally down here, guys. Um, so no job. I had just gotten married. It had ended. Uh, I was living in my parents' basement at 33. Uh, I just like I had no idea what to do. It, I literally felt like everything came crumbling down in one day. And so I remember thinking, like, this can't, this can't be it. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, at 33, you think you're going to have a different life. You think you're going to be doing something different than you're doing. And then you snap your fingers and everything comes crashing down. And so I know a little bit about struggle. And so this, like, this, this thing that happened to me spiraled this whole self-growth journey for myself over the last three to four years. And I learned three big game changers that have helped me and now I can help my clients actually start like taking action, get unstuck and start moving forward. All right. So let's talk about motivation right now. So I'm going to tell you something. It's not, I don't think it's a big secret, but it might be a big secret to you. But here's the thing, you guys, motivation is crap. Okay. It really is. Motivation is crap. And I know this because number one, you guys, motivation will not get you very far because you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy and to do the things that aren't risky or overwhelming, right? Like it's easy to do the easy things. It's easy to go to your job that you've been working at for like 10 years. It's easy to sit at home and watch Netflix on the couch. It's easy to stay in a relationship that you've been in for 10 years, even though it's toxic, right? So you only feel motivated to do the stuff that's easy. I don't know how this started, but we literally put this word motivation up on a pedestal, right? Like if I'm, I'm saying this word to you right now, and aren't you thinking like, yeah, motivation, yeah, 
right? But we literally, we put it up on this pedestal, and for some reason, we just sit around and we wait for it to show up, right? Like, you have those days where you're like, I don't feel like it, t- I don't feel like going to the gym today. I'll go tomorrow. Or I don't feel ready. I'm not, feel- oh, I don't feel ready, right? We just put it up on this pedestal and we wait for it, and sometimes it doesn't show up. I love this quote so much. So at some point, we all bought into this lie that you've got to feel ready in order to change, and that's by Mel Robbins, and it's so true. The number of people that come to me, reach out to me, and need to make a change desperately say, well, like maybe I'll contact you next month. Like next month is better. Well, what's the difference between today and next month, right? So motivation's junk. I'm so sorry to tell you, but it's not really going to get you very far. Now, the second reason motivation is junk is because, you guys, here's what happens, okay? So think of this area in your life right now that you're stuck. I want you to bring it forth. Okay, we want to make a change, right? There's an area of your life you're like, oh, I'm so stuck. I really want to make a change. But guess what? It's going to require you to step out of your comfort zone, right? And as adults, oh, man, do you guys, we love our comfort zone so much, don't we? Like, it feels so good to stay here in a comfortable place. It feels good to stay at home and watch Netflix and not go out there and, like, put ourselves out there at the gym. You know, it feels good to stay in one spot. Because as adults, we've had all of these experiences in our life that teach us it could be scary. We don't know what the consequences are. It's overwhelming. As kids, not so much. We don't have all these experiences that we've had as adults. So we're more willing to break out of our comfort zone. But I see this every day. Adults are terrified. We love our comfort zone so dang much. And so guess what? You've got to make a change. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. Here's what happens if you rely on motivation and motivation alone. This horrible habit loop. Okay, it starts with procrastination. Like, oh, you know what? I don't feel like it today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow turns into next week. Next week turns into next month and so on. And then we cycle around into good old self-doubt, right? Like slap in the face. You know what? You're not good enough. You shouldn't do that. There's too many other people out there doing the same thing. You'll never make it. You know what? You can't do this. And then you go right underneath to excuses, right? I don't have time. Oh, my family, I got too much going on with my family, right? I don't, I don't have the money to invest financially. I don't have the time to invest. And then you just, you guys, you keep cycling back around in this horrible habit loop, right? Procrastinate, self-doubt excuses, procrastinate, self-doubt excuses, and you get stuck. And it literally feels like you're riding a hamster wheel. And I know this because I did this to myself for 13 years. I was stuck in the fitness industry for 13 years too afraid to break out of my comfort zone to do something different because fitness was all I knew. And you just get stuck in that habit loop for like so long. So you can see, motivation isn't what you thought, right? But you guys have a kicker. There's one more thing that absolutely sabotages motivation almost every single time. I know you're like, right? Now, unless you are a person that is very comfortable about getting uncomfortable, The next thing here is going to sabotage any motivation. And that one thing that sabotages it every time, boom, fear. Every single time. But guess what, you guys? Fear is just the story that you're telling yourself. It's all of this stuff that you literally have built up in your head of the worst case scenario that could happen, right? It's just a story we're telling ourselves. And you know what? 90% of what we actually fear never even happens. So here's what fear stands for. It stands for false evidence appearing real, right? I told myself so many times, like, okay, if I take, oh, if I, Brit, if you take a risk and you just try to leave your job or you do something different in the fitness industry, this is what's going to happen. Well, you're not going to have any, as much work. Oh, my gosh, you're not going to make as much money. If you don't make as much money, you can't pay your bills. If you can't pay your bills, you're going to be homeless. If you're homeless, you have to move back in with your parents. If you live with your parents, people aren't thinking you're, you're not cool anymore. You're going to have no friends. And so then I created this, like, story in my head, and, and then I was terrified, so I couldn't move. So fear literally creeps in every single time for us, and it sabotages any motivation that we might have. And this is why we cannot rely on motivation alone. So what the heck do we do? Like, I hope right now you're thinking about that area in your life that you were stuck, and you're like, oh, man, that's me. That's me. Like, now you're, like, on the edge of your seat, and like, hey, Britt, like, what do I do? What do I do? So I'll tell you that motivation is not all junk, as long as you have the right thing to motivate you. What? 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 And we're going to circle it back to your why. Okay, your why is your purpose, cause, or belief that drives you 
It should be a pull instead of a mindset that you have to push yourself to take the actions to achieve your goals. I know when somebody's got a push mindset because they come at me with this language like, oh, you know, Britt, like I really have to make a change. Okay, I have to go on a diet. I have to go to the gym. I have to, I have to, I have to. So when you're saying things like I have to, you're already in this push mindset. And a push is not strong. If you're being pushed to do something, I'm sorry. You're going to give up. You're going to start that habit loop of procrastination, self-doubt, and excuses. And you're not going to get anywhere. However, imagine this, you guys. Imagine you have a why or a purpose that's so powerful that you cannot help but get pulled. Okay? I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to tell you my why. My why and why I wake up every morning is you guys. I love impacting people so much. So on the days that I am struggling and I've been working and nothing's happening and I'm frustrated and I feel like I don't even know what the heck I'm doing, one person can send me a message on social media that said, hey man, I watched your Brits babble today and like, whoa, it resonated with me so much. You're so inspiring every single time I see you. Like I just, I question myself and, and uh, you're inspiring and your energy and like, oh, I love it. That one message, you guys, can catapult the rest of my week to being like, no, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I know I'm struggling, but I'm going to keep going. It's a pull. I can't help it because I'm thinking, what if the message I put out today helps one person, just one person, like actually make a change? So that's my big why. And my second why is, like, who are you playing for, right? Like, who are you playing for? So number one, I'm playing for myself. I'm playing for myself. I want to build myself a life I'm proud of. I want to build something, you know, that I can pass on. I want to build myself a really great life. I mean, I'm single right now, but one day I hope to remarry. I hope to have kids. So you guys, I'm playing for my future family too. This family that I'm going to have one day. And I'm playing for my family now that I have, like my mom, my dad, my brother. I'm playing for them. And they're right here. And so one day that I can, I can give them back what they gave me. So when the time comes, I can show up for them financially or through a time investment or whatever, because I'm recognizing that, man, I gotta play for somebody. So on the days that I feel horrible, and you guys, I have bad days. If you watch my social media, you're like, wow, that chick's always fired up. Um, nobody sees me cry. Like, I've had a million breakdowns since COVID, crying. I just cried last week. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but on those days when I just feel like I can't go on, I sit down and I focus on my why. And then I get a pull and I'm like, you can't, I can't help but do what I need to do because I'm pulled in that direction. So your why is so, so powerful. Okay, so we talked about motivation. We feel good about it now, like we're coming to terms with it. So now what the heck do you actually do? All right, what the heck do we actually do? All right, so here, these are three things that have been game changers for me, you guys. Absolute game changers, all right? in getting from here, feeling like that in that picture where I was at the worst point of my life to being here. And so what the heck, how do we start to move forward? Because we need to know. You guys, ironically enough, the three things spell act, right? So A stands for action, that's your first thing, okay? You gotta take action, you just have to take it. The second thing, C, stands for change your story, okay? And then the T stands for trust yourself. So I'm gonna go into these. So these are the three things that have changed my life. Okay, let's start with the A. Let's start with the A, so which action. There's nothing to tell you, but you have to take it. You just have to start. Remember we talked about motivation saying you're not going to feel like it? Well, guess what? You're not going to feel like it, but you got to start. So you're like, Britt, how do I start now? Okay, how do I start? Here's what you do. You got to start slow. Okay, start slow. Do not take on any more than you can 100% commit to. I see this all the time. We have like weekday warriors, right? They come to me, they're like, yeah, hey, Britt, I just wanted to tell you like on Monday, I'm going to start going to the gym. I'm going to change my eating. I'm going to give up drinking. I'm going to, you know, journal. I'm going to go to bed early. And they give themselves like eight or nine things to do on Monday. And then Monday comes and they're right fired up. They're like, yeah, nailed it. Monday comes, yeah, cool, cool. Tuesday comes along. They're like, well, okay, that was tough, but I still did it. Wednesday comes along, they've dropped off on two things. Thursday comes along, they've dropped off on most things. And by Friday, it's like, screw this. Like, I'm done. You cannot take on more than you can commit to. Okay? It might look like one to three things per day. Heck, it might look like one to three things per week. And that's okay. All that matters is that you're taking action. And then we've got to map it out. You can't just say it. You've got to map it out. You have to treat it like it's important because it is important. 
So you've got to make a list, a daily actions list, a weekly actions list, and you've got to write it down. You've got to write it down. You can't leave it up here. All right? Treat it like an appointment. Treat it like it's important because it is important. All right? So that's your A. Number two. All right, we've got to... C stands for change your story. Now, this one is powerful, and I don't know why this showed up so stinking small, but here we go. We all tell ourselves a story. You guys are all telling yourself a story right now. You're telling yourself a story about who you are, what you're doing, where you're going, what, who you're becoming, you know? And sometimes it's not a good story. I love this quote more than anything. So, and I'll read it out loud a couple times. It's kind of small, but the only thing keeping you from getting what you want is the story you keep telling yourself about why you can't have it. Read that again. The only thing keeping you from getting what you want is the story you keep telling yourself about why you can't have it. The story I told myself for 13 years was that I was a poor personal trainer that was overworked, I would never be successful, own my own business, and that I was stuck in the fitness industry because it was the only thing I was good at for 13 years, and I validated that story to myself every single day. Through my self-talk, through my actions, I made myself poor, because that's, that's the story I told myself for so long. Now, how did I change my story? Like, how can you change your story? Two simple things. Number one, you have to start becoming aware of your self-talk. So, when I catch myself telling myself the wrong story, like, Okay, you know what, Britt, yeah, you got to take these extra five clients because chances are you're not going to make any money next month. And then I would validate that and I would say, like, whoa, no. Okay, no, like, Britt, you're abundant, man. You bring value to people. You're good at what you do. You are in the process of building your dream life. Or I would say things to myself, like, you're not financially where you want to be yet. You don't have your dream job yet. You're not exactly where you need to be yet. And so I had to catch myself, and it's a full-time job in the beginning. Like, literally, I was like, whoa bad thought again. Whoa, bad thought again. And then I started to realize how I was talking to myself. So I had to change my self-talk. I had to course correct the story I was telling myself that was not the right story. And then the second thing that I did to change my story was I started bringing the truth into every situation. So if you bring truth and logic into it, it changes everything. So like, think about this. Was the truth that I was going to be broke forever? Well, like actual truth, no, because there's multiple ways to create income. Okay, so that wasn't true. Second thing, would I ever, so I would never be successful in the fitness industry. Okay, well, if I really think about it, that's not true. There's tons and tons of fitness professionals all over the world that are successful. So I'm like, oh. Third thing, was I stuck in the fitness industry because I was good at nothing else? Well, heck no. Like here I am today, this is the first time that I'm in front of people not teaching a fitness class and not talking about exercise, right? Woo-hoo! So that wasn't true. <laughs> woo -woo! Although I could do some squats for you guys if you want. So that wasn't true. So if you like bring the truth into every situation, it kind of like, I like talk about it like slapping me in the face and waking me up and I was like, shit, like this, no, this is not my story. This is not my story. All right, the last one is, your, is the T, the third piece of the puzzle. And that stands for trust yourself. This is huge. You guys, you have to trust that gut feeling that's pushing you to do something. I'm sorry, but I do not believe in coincidence. So that like feeling in your gut, right, that when something's right, it means it's right. The feeling in your gut when something is wrong, you guys, that means it's wrong. And you have to start listening to this feeling that like intuition, saying that you got to do something, go somewhere, call someone, you know, make a change. Like it's right. You have to start listening to it. And the second thing, oh, if there's one thing, if you don't remember my face or anything that I said today, please, goodness gracious, remember this. Stop breaking promises to yourself, please. If your friend called you up tonight and called you and said, hey, you know what, I'm having a really hard time with this COVID stuff. Like, I really need someone to talk to. Can you meet me for coffee tomorrow at 10 a.m.? And you were like, yeah, man, like, I'll promise, I'll be there. I got your back. And then tomorrow comes along and you wake up Guess what? You don't, you don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Right? You don't want to get ready. You don't want to go. You just don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. So you call your friend in the morning. And you're like, hey, ugh, sorry. Like, I don't feel like it. Like, I want to get ready. I'm not, not going to come. Like, what the hairy heck? I hope you are not doing that, right? Like, hashtag, you can't make this shit up. But so you, 
all the people in your life that you care about, you respect, and you love, you don't break promises to them, do you? So why the heck are you doing it to yourself? And you guys do it all the time. I know because I do it to myself. I love craft beer more than anything. I'm just, ugh. Everyone's like, you're a trainer and you drank? And I was like, yeah, I eat pizza too. Suck it. Um, sorry. <laughs> But I love craft beer so much. And so, like, I'll make a promise to myself on Sunday. I'm like, you know what, Britt? Let's get back on the health train. I'm like, no beer this week, right? So I made a promise. I'm like, you're going you're gonna to be good all week. And my friend phones me up. He's like, hey, Britt, you want to go for a drink on Wednesday night? I'm like, I'll be there. <laughs> I just broke, I broke that promise to myself. But even though it seems like a small promise, you guys, it matters. It creates this, like, horrible um, habit that you're doing to yourself. So you've got to stop because there was a feel, there's a gut feeling on why you needed to make a change or why you needed to do something, but we just break these tiny promises to ourselves constantly, and they seem small, but in, in the grand scheme of things, they add up to big, all right? So those are, honestly, that's it, you guys. Those are the three pieces of the puzzle that are massive game changers. So if you're thinking right now about this area of your life where you are stuck, guys, all you have to do is act. That's it. Think about this. This is my words of wisdom for the day. If you focused on becoming 1% better every single day instead of 100% better, imagine where you would be and how happy you would be, right? As humans, we are designed and programmed that progress equals happiness. And this goes for any area of our life. If there's any area in our life that we're not making progress, we become unhappy, disinterested, we go back to that horrible habit loop of self-doubt, procrastination, excuses. So we need to make progress as humans to, to experience joy and happiness. So instead of trying to be 100% better on Monday and change everything, what if you committed to becoming 1% better every single day? Imagine where you would be, right? And you just acted. You took action every day, even if it was small. You started changing the story that you told yourself up here and you literally actually started to trust yourself. Like imagine what would happen. And this is what I teach my clients. Because if this isn't good and this isn't good, the rest of it doesn't matter, right? So you guys, talk about changing the story to yourself. I told myself I was a poor personal trainer. This picture right here of me doing that cool handstand. Um, I now own two businesses. Uh, my Get Fit With Burt company is mine. And I recently just brought a franchise over from England called Hit Zone, which I am part owner and the general manager. So this is proof, you guys, you can change your story. 